In this video, we're going to answer the question, how can we use a select dropdown which could update the chart with new data set in Chart.js? All right, so basically what we want to do here is we want to create a select dropdown. And then once we selected a certain value, it should replace the original value there with a new data set. So let's start and explore how to do this. And I make this question because someone had asked for this question not directly in this but very close to this and i'll be making another video of course related to that specific question where there was a request for a multi-level select drop down option so we will explore that as well in another video but for now i want to focus only on the drop down itself because this is a quite useful option to know all right to do this all we need to do is first we need to go to the chart yes we have here our blank html file you can see here this is the browser and then what i want to do here is i want to add up the chart here so i'm going to just copy this chunk of code here and put it in here make sure for proper indentation there we are and i want to like to adjust this to constants so we have a constant variable there you are and then in here we need to add still the chart js library so let's add up the chart.js library and we click here on getting started. And in here we have the chart.js library. I will copy that, paste it in here. Make sure this is above the JavaScript code that is related to this chart.js library. All right. So we've got everything here. Now, if we would save this and I would like to have a, uh, well, I'm going to make here a chart box. I'll make a separate div here. And in this div, I have a class called chart box. So we are going to make sure that the chart is within here. Main reason for this is to ensure that the chart doesn't expand to infinity. All right, we've got this now. Of course, here we need to have a style. Let's put it here between. There's a style tag. And then in this style tag, we're going to put in here the chart box class. And in this chart box class, we will put in the width. We will have a fixed width of 600 pixels we save that go back here refresh there you are so now we have this what i want to do maybe is to move it a little bit from the side that's probably more appropriate say here some padding i say here 20 pixels there we are so we are now here nicely so this is nice we've got all of this now what we want to do is we want to have a select drop down option so basically a select so we say here a select or we can make a div if class I'll say is select box and then within here we'll say select and then within the select we will say here the option that we want and we will make two or three options let's make three different options here and in these options we will say here value one or let's say uh, this would be we want to show for example different company uh, sales records for example so we say here sales are for a specific product. So we say coffee. And then we have here espresso. And finally here cappuccino. Cappuccino. All right. So once we have this here, we can put in here value. And this value will be this, but specifically we're going to put in here the numbers. So we're going to save this refresh here. There you are. All right, so now we have this here. What we want to do here eventually is to make sure that this responds with JavaScript. So the JavaScript will be connected here. We'll understand that this here will be connected. Or the HTML, understand that this is a JavaScript function. It's be connected eventually with Chart.js. So that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to put in here. We're going to create a function here. And this function will basically extract the values that we have here. So what we're going to do here is we can say a function. Let me say um, sales or coffee tracker. Let's say sales tracker. Sales tracker for all these coffee. All right. So we have this here. So the next thing what we want to do eventually is to get these values here. So how will we get these values? Well, basically what we need to do here is we have here the class. Let's give this a class one ID is probably the best coffee sales we're going to use this and then we say here create a new constant and we say coffee sales equals document dot get 
element by ID. And then here, we're going to search for the ID name of coffee sales. But we don't want to have the coffee sales. We eventually, what we want to have is the value here that we selected. So that's what we're going to do as well. So what we're going to do now is first we're going to get a add event listener to connect these together. So the moment that we have this, you will start to see, will start to connect. So let's do this one immediately. So we say here, coffee sales dot add event listener. And then in here, how will we uh, target this? We can do this on change or on change or on click, doesn't matter. We can see which one will respond accordingly. I expect the on change would be fine. And the sales tracker here. Once we've got that, you can say here console.log. And all I, what I want is I want the coffee sales, but specifically the value that we selected. So if I save this, I should see this here. And if not, it needs to be adjusted to on click instead of change. So if I refresh here, and the reason why it's changed is basically this here. If we change this here, there you are. What do we get here? Oh, let's double check if we have a value. So coffee, espresso, and cap. I'll just do this one first because we will have different values in here. All right. We have the espresso, we have the cappuccino, and we have the coffee. So it recognizes the connection that we have. What we want to do now is instead of this, we want to get the value here and start to use this. So we say here, just a very simple value, let's say the coffee sales would be this one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this data here, but I will leave the brackets out because this here makes it a string. So here we'll just put in these three. Now I'll just adjust here some values. So let's say espresso sales is five, six, and then uh, one, two, one, one. And then here we have another one, cappuccino is a quite good seller, it's 20. And here we have 25, and then we have here 10, 15, 9, and 8. All right, we've got that. So once we save this and refresh, you will see here, we've got this. All right, so we can see these values here. However, these values are still string values. This means we need to convert them. So what we're going to do here now is going to convert the values. So we have the coffee sales values. And basically here, what we want to do is the following. We're going to say the coffee sales value. We're going to convert this. So we say here, the following option. So here, what we need to do is the coffee sales value. And then what we need to do here is to basically use a split function. With split, we're going to remove certain values because right now it's a string. So we need to convert it from a string to an array. So we say here, split. And what exactly do we want to split? Well, we have here the comma. Every time there's a comma, and basically we could even do the space as well, because this space will eventually become an issue as well, but we can just try this. We say here, split on a comma. So if we do this, we can check this as well with our console log. So let's get this here, put it in here, save that, and refresh. So the moment we do this, now it is a array. As you can see here, it recognizes it becomes an array. It's an array with a value of or a length of six. However, there's a space here. So let's see if it can read it with space or without space. Let's double check that. So what we're going to do here now, basically we're very close to it. We're going to say here the new value. So what you want to do is you want to assign the value here. So we say here, basically for my chart, how do we assign it? We need to override whatever is in the data here. So basically we'll say my chart data and then data sets data equals whatever is the new value here. So let's do that immediately. So we say my chart dot, then let's get it back here. Data and then data sets, data dot, data sets. And then here, remember this is a indexable value. So we say zero because it starts with zero base counting. So this is a array here as well. And then here data. And then we say equal to the value that we have selected here in the coffee sales. Once we did that, all that we need to do is here now update or my chart dot update. So to update the values in the chart. And if we save this now, let's see what happens. So if you click espresso, all right, as you can see here, the space here is not a problem 
the chart.js, it can read it exactly as expected. As you can see, once we select this here, blue number six, and in cappuccino, we select here 25, 20. So let's double check if that's correct. 20, 25, here number six. As you can see, everything is same here. So let's double check here what we have here. We have this here. Maybe you say, well, this is fancy, oh, and this is quite nice, but we're missing something, and you're right. What we're really missing here is not the number of votes here, but it should be matching whatever our item is. So let's do that one as well. So what we can do here is to get maybe the exact text matching here. So what we'll do here is the following. So let's first extract the text. So we say here in the coffee sales, we're going to do this, so I'm going to move the console log. We don't need the console log anymore. And the split value here is no needed anymore. We have it already in the values. And then what we will say here, this console log, if I'm not mistaken, it's a text. We'll just have to double check. And we say here, no, this one is text, all right, that's fine. But I need to make a console log from this. So we say console.log, save that. And refresh and then now I see if we can extract the value all right that doesn't work so what I, I will just quickly check what's the official term for this all right so what we have to do is basically this one I realize that this is not the way to do it because we need to pinpoint it more specifically so we say here this and then we put in here the options basically the dot options because we're going to pinpoint the specific option here so if I refresh here Let's look at this here. That's not what we needed. We needed this one here. All right. So basically what we have to do here is the following. We say the coffee sales, which is the ID. And then we have the option. And in the option here, we're going to say we want the coffee sales, which is the ID, dot selected index, which will count in which position our options is here. So basically it's 1, 2, and 3, or 0, 1, and 2. So we'll get that specific value here. So once we have this, this, then we say dot text, then we should have a correct response here. So let's refresh and see that. All right, so there you are. So this is the reason why, and what is the other error? Is that's this one here, we can remove that. So what we really did here was we get the index, then we say in options, and then within this options, get the selected index here well for text basically what we could do as well we could also do the same one with the value this dot value here doesn't matter so much however we have to still split it as well at the end so that's basically it so if we refresh here now we have these all right so what i want to do now is i want to adjust the value here in the label itself so this is basically this one here the number of votes this should be coffee by default so we say coffee and then what we're going to do is we're going to say here the following because we already have this one here what i will say here this is constant label and in this label we have this all right so then i say here we're going to go how do we get that well my chart data data sets and then you go to label that's what we need to do so we say my chart dot data dot data sets and then this is zero and then dot label equals label because our label here that's this one or this basically this value here so if i save this now and update this refresh we should see now a matching design here there you are that looks beautiful and you can see all of these values are starting to adjust as well so this is basically how we can adjust them with a drop down option here connected with a javascript function here thank you for watching this video and i hope you enjoy it and if you enjoy this video you probably will enjoy this one as well and if you're interested in chart.js check out in the description box the link directing to my chart.js course where you can learn everything about chart.js and finally of course make sure you subscribe to my channel